You are listening to the Park Flyer Podcast, where we discuss our RC adventures. Welcome to the Park Flyer Podcast, where we discuss the ups and downs of the new RC Flyer. Join your hosts, Michael and Jay, as they take flight at the park. Now on with the show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Park Flyer Podcast. I'm Michael with Arizona. I'm Michael from Arizona. With me always are my good friends. Jay from the hills of Texas. And AK Mike in Texas. I was almost with Arizona and not from Arizona, but whatever. Yeah. It, it, hey, these things Well, happen. I'm with Arizona, Mike. You aren't. <laughs> That's right. You guys are with me. I'm not with you. Yeah. I guess I could be with uh-huh. myself, but... Well, uh, welcome to this week's episode. We uh, left off last uh, episode talking about um, an airplane that we uh, had received, right? That Jay was uh, talking about, the Tough Wing. And, the, uh, spec, the Spec Wing. Oh, uh, the Spec Wing. Sorry, not yes. the Tough Wing, but the Spec Wing. <laughs> and uh, we left off that episode without you having test flown it. That's right. So uh, I think tonight we're going to talk a little bit, or today, whatever time it is. <laughs> We always <laughs> wherever you are, wherever folks. you are today, it's either morning or night. Whatever time it is for you, and whatever day it is for you, it it's is that right. day. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, we're going to talk a little bit about that, but but first, a word from our sponsors. Three D Air Adventures, adding fun to the RC hobby, one layer at a time. Feeling weak and powerless? Sounds to me like you need A-Power batteries. When someone needs the best, they always choose the AT. A-Power batteries. Get on the web and get yours today. All right, welcome back. All right, so we talked to you a little bit about the build last time, and you hadn't got a chance to fly it, but that has changed. Now, yes. You yes, have I, had I've got to fly it um, several times. Well, good. All right. So the weather's been beautiful here, and the weather's been beautiful down there in Texas as well, from what I understand. Yeah, a little windy, but it's been it's been very nice days. And you you were able to get out to the field and uh, and just fly it and uh, give us your first impressions. What would you think? Okay, so um, uh, this is going to go to AK Mike. Not that he's flown the plane, but remember when you first got your tough wing? The, the little one, the 24 yeah. inch one. Yeah. And the first time we went out to fly it. So it was squirrely. It was really squirrely, right? It was. And it was all over the place. And it took us a while to get it kind of Mostly, dialed I in. I thought it was me as a pilot. Right. But, but it turns out it, it really wasn't. It, I mean, well, partly it, it, it just, bad, it was, but... it just was squirrely. Plus we had, you know, getting the CG, right. Even though there wasn't. And a that lot was of really meat. what made it squirrely. It was the CG was just yeah. off. We realized right. the battery wasn't heavy enough for it. It wasn't heavy enough. Right. So I, I, Having remembered that, and even with the tough wing, not to say it was the bigger, the 32 inch one, to say that it was similar, but still the first flight, you know, when you first chuck that thing, you don't know which way it's going to go. Um, you don't know if it's going to fly level wing, or, or want to die. Right. What's that? The normal tough wings? Yeah. The normal tough wing. I think that has everything to do with the person throwing it though, don't it? Well, and a little bit of the person throwing it, if you, you know, you, if you had enough reflex set into it you know if it's not, not you know because it, yeah, right because right, it may start diving to the ground you're giving it full up and then you know what i mean then you're trimming it until you can kind of figure it out where it's semi-flying straight land this it is your first flight that's what right. you're talking right. about. you, you see where you see where everything's kind of sitting against the the uh the fins and you go oh okay make some man you know manual right. changes right. to it so that you throw it the next time right it's a lot closer then it's just a few clicks of trim as opposed to like the full <laughs> limit of trim um, like the, I need help. I need help. I need help. <laughs> yes, I, I need help. I need help. I, mean, I need help. Our listeners don't ever go through that. I'm sure. Yeah. Just us. Yeah, just so th- that was just a standard for the for the wing for the tough wing. The very first flight, you know, that, it got better the more we've yeah, done. Right, but right. usually that first flight usually needed two people, one guy to jump back there, you know, hand on the hand on the the trim to immediately start helping. You know, give me right, give me left, give me well, up, down, whatever. Right. So this time. Unfortunately, I was out by myself, uh-huh. and I was like, "Hmm." Yeah. So you're of two minds during that whole process. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm sitting there going, "Hmm." After my previous experiences tell me that this thing is going to be a little unstable when I check it. 
and I'm not going to have anybody help me. So I'm going to have to be throw it beyond the sticks immediately, you know, so yeah. Yeah. Ah. full gas, right? Full <laughs> throttle the whole time. <laughs> straight vertical. That ought to work. So yeah. that's kind of what I did. Uh, I, I did uh, one of those, I did one of those launches. Therefore I could get my hands on the sticks, both sticks after I chuck it, it's going up. You know what I mean? I, I should have a lot more time to figure out which way it's going, if it's right. up, down, or indifferent. So, um, you know, I'm like, hmm, full throttle, half throttle. Once again, it doesn't have the same thrust as our 32s. Yeah, it's got a little it's, smaller motor, right? Yeah, it's got a small, it's got a quad motor on it. Right. So I'm just like, you know, it, so I kind of ran at full power, and I'm like, hmm, is my battery good? You know, so I, I double check my battery, and I'm like, okay, the battery's fully, fully charged. It's given, it's given all. Like she's crash got. in the first flight. Yeah. So I'm just like, oh, okay, this thing's pretty light, so everything should be okay. So. I chuck it and I got back to it right on right almost immediately. I, I was able to get my hands on the, on the controls and it just climbed out. And if anything, I had too much reflex in there and it was climbing at a 45 oh, yeah. <clears throat> degree angle or so 50, right. 55. And it was just climbing. And so I reduced the throttle and then it just kind of leveled off and it was just flying around. Perfect. Wasn't go. It was. It was a little windy too. So I hate that when that happens. I mean, yeah, no, then, you know, right. your your heart doesn't panic, and you you know, it still was pounding a little bit. I, I mean, was, that's I was when I use my heavy thumbs and stuff. I was waiting I for mean, the other shoe to drop because right. the other thing I was wondering was, well, is the CG right? Well, it right? was flying, so it must have been right. Well, it was flying, but that doesn't mean if I slow down and then it stalls. That it's going to go into a death spiral. That's true, but you get some amount, altitude right? to check that out, though, right? So, yeah. So, I was just getting the altitude. I was getting up there. Um, but, yeah, I got up to, I got up to altitude. I kind of got back to, like, half the quarter throttle, and it was just put, putting along. No problem. Wasn't getting Great. blown. It wasn't getting blown terribly. In the, it was kind of gusting, but it wasn't getting blown around terribly. I was quite surprised. Wow. So... I'm sitting there and I did my trim. I did corrected my trim, did some stuff and the plane was just flying beautifully. Now you and I'm said, like, you wow. set it up according to uh, what, what the direction said, correct? Yeah, well, the directions I mean, really didn't go into anything. Yeah, about I mean, it. It, like throws and that kind of thing. At the, yeah, uh, no, you just kind of guesstimated. Yeah. Basically I, I grabbed the old tough wing, copied right. it into a new model and just used that. Okay. Well, so my question is though, is that how much trim did you need for the up and down? I mean, if it's quite a bit, I did, I did, need, uh, I did need a lot of down trim because I put in, I put in what I normally put in for reflex for like the tough wing, oh, and right. that was too much. That was right. way too much. So I went back and I set it neutrally. Uh, you know, I put it at neutral, and well, I, I'd, I'd say just barely, barely, like two degrees of up trim or, or reflex. You know, two to three. You know. And, and that seemed to be, you know, pretty much spot on. Still, that was a little bit too much, but it only took a couple of clicks of down and it was flying, you know, perfectly level. And it wasn't, it didn't seem to have any turning, ten, you know, tendencies or anything like that. So I was quite pleased. Now, it, this, it one, no this one weighs considerably less than what you're, I mean, you, yes. you're flying your tough wing is very heavy. Cause yes. It's solid. It's a big roll of tape. But this one... <laughs> obviously he's not and so did you notice that on the sticks that there was a difference oh uh, yeah no uh, most no notab notably because i was able to fly at like i said half throttle to the quarter throttle and it had no problems with that yeah normally you're at least a half to three quarters on yours or full if i'm flying well yeah so that's what that one's made to do so that's right no so yeah so i I was quite amazed that it was flying as stably as it was in the, in the semi-gusting conditions on that first flight. And so what I had to conclude was that where ours, like I said, if, you know, when I had the comparison of the two planes next to each other, uh, the tough wing has a, has a longer cord right. and it's fatter, uh, where this one, and it's, and it's a short wing where the other one is 34 inches. It's, uh, the wings are longer, slend more slender, but they're a lot longer. And I'm just thinking that it makes a lot of sense to me because the thing, it, the the platform is very stable, and that makes sense because it's an, it's built for doing FPV. Right, right, right. So you want something that's going to be stable that doesn't react to the wind. 
and be where the tough down. where the tough wing was more rough and tumble, smashing into each other, right? You know, type of plane. You know, put the biggest motor you could fit on the back of it. You know, <laughs> that type of thing. <laughs> Go so, uh, fast. yeah. So yeah, I, it, it 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 flew for the for the maiden. It, I didn't really have any issues. In fact, I, I went ahead and well, I got up to altitude. I tried to stall it, and I could not, which amazed me. Okay, so normally these things technically a wing doesn't really stall, but it starts to wag. So it's this one doesn't wag. It just, not not like the not like the other one does. Yeah. So huh. most of the most of these, if you're set up and you have just the right amount of reflex, it'll just wag really. If you got it really slow, it wags, 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 and if you get it wagging too much, it'll roll over and just kind of go into a spiral. But you yep. you could not get this one to do that at all. No, this one was not doing that. And, and in fact, once I, once I tried to stall it, you know, I, I get it going, you know, shut everything down. In fact, uh, I was in, unable to turn off the, turn the brake on. Uh, so it was definitely, you know, the, the motor was definitely slowing it down and, uh, I tried, you know, kept the nose up and it just would let the nose drop and it would just continue flying. Now, did you try um, any like, like uh level fly to a higher, you know, like a 45 degree, pull the power off and let it run out of mm-hmm. energy? And it's still yeah. kind of sunk. Yeah. Now there's, uh, there is, uh, that's not entirely true. So this was from low rates to medium rates. Okay. On, on the, how I have it normally set up on the tough wing. If I went to high rates, then it would do, then it would, it would go ahead and it would stall it. It, it, it would go ahead and stall out or it might, you know, drop a wing. Right. But you, that's because you had more control throw on on the actual yeah yeah you know, control service but from but from medium to low i i could not get it to stall it just would mush forward and continue flying wow. which was nice huh. and once again it kind of makes sense to me right because sure it's an fpv plane so you know right. it's going to be designed you not, want to yeah you want to behave differently cause you want it to right. behave differently and not you know, we're, we're for us. But I thought it was racing, though. So I guess you do. Right. You it's, do. You but still want you're to racing. Like FPV, that, right? FPV racing, yeah, right? Right. So you need a platform that's still stable. You you can go fast or you can go whatever, but you, you don't want the plane. If you, you know, because it's kind of very hard to gauge your speed, right? So if you're slowing down to go through a corner, you don't want it to, you know. Just roll off into a desk. Right? Roll off to one side because you you're never going to recover that because, you know, it's really hard since you yeah, not, you're not looking at it. You know, it's first person view, so. Yeah. And that's troublesome watching yourself hit the ground. I don't, I don't <laughs> like that at all. You're down there reaching for the yellow handle. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, the ejection handle's not on the park bench, unfortunately. <laughs> well, that's exciting, so, though, that you were able to get it, you know, the maiden the very first time to get out there and, and uh, you know, nothing major happened. And very, I mean, you said just a few adjustments when you brought it back down, right? Uh, I'm sorry. Say that one more time. You, there were just a few adjustments when you brought it back down. I mean, you went. Out oh yeah, yeah. And well, then you just brought it back, and there was just only. Very- I, I made some mechanical. I made mechanical adjustments, and then after that, it just. I mean, one or two clicks, and then it was flying great. Wow. So I that really impressed me. Just you know, <laughs> compared to the old ones, I mean, that was just that was very nice. So the so second, like that. third launches or fourth, how many launches you've done since then were a little bit less vertical and more just a normal launch? Oh uh, yeah, they were just they were just more normal launches, and the plane just flies that flies straight normal and just climbs out. And uh, yeah, it, that's it's easy peasy. So you could you know you don't have to. I usually like to grab it by the nose, you know, when I like to throw it. Yeah, over your shoulder. Uh, but you can definitely do a side launch. Uh, pretty easily because it you don't need a whole bunch of speed like you know with mine you need to have a a bit of speed right and that's why I launch it like that because I can give it a good hefty humph this one you know you can give it a dainty toss and off she wafts this this one's a lot like uh, uh, my AK Mike's right because his was really light and a little smaller than ours I think didn't you have the twenty eight yeah, no he had twenty four inch twenty four yeah, so it was a little bit lighter because I remember flying his up in Alaska and it was just like <laughs> He just kind of threw it, and it just caught the wind and kind of went. Right. Off. Well, once once you once we figured everything out for the CG and you know for the batteries and stuff, yeah. Then it, then it, oh yeah, yeah, that's a lot better, right? Yeah. I mean, it really was the CG was the biggest issue here. As yeah. soon as I put 
I think I put a big old washer, like washer a in there, inch yep. washer and washer in there because the batteries were just uh, so light. They oh, expected right. a 3200, 1300, I think, and I and I had like a thousands, and they just weren't, you know, gram for gram, they just weren't heavy enough. And uh, oh, yeah, so we just put we a big old washer in there, and then what's that? We use the 2200s. No, well, not talking about to my 24 inch only took the th 1300. Oh, it wouldn't take right, a 2200. It's right, too small. Right. And so, yeah, so we, I only had a thousand that I was using, three cell thousands. And, um, and so we ended up having a, uh, basically put a washer in there to right. make it work. I did have a one or two 1300s and it was like, hey, it flies fine. It was flying fine. And then it's not flying fine anymore. It's like, what's going on? And then I realized, oh, wait, I'm using this lighter battery. <laughs> and it, made, it makes yeah, a big difference, evidently. It does I mean, make a big who'd, 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 who'd have figured? Yeah, who'd have thunk? Who'd have thunk it? So what were your other impressions? Did you, I mean, you know, now that you've kind of flown it, uh, you know, is it, is it fun? Is it exciting? Did you get it to do anything? Because when I talked to you, it just maidened it. And you were telling me you didn't do anything crazy because you didn't want to eject the battery and wind up. Right, right, right. So I, I, I didn't go, you know, totally. It definitely rolled, rolled very nice. Um, very actual rolls. So that part was very nice. Um it didn't have a tendency to pull one way or the other. You know, sometimes they get a little wonky with the Elevons, you know, uh, it, you know, uh, they once they get old, old, sometimes they just start doing that. Loop. Yeah. They do that, that wide augering. Wow. Wow. Right. You know, when you try to do things, this one's very actual as it's ro rolling actual, actual ax axial. axial. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I didn't get too crazy with it because, um, Ever since you've chucked my battery out of the tough wing, I don't know what you're uh, talking about. you know, five years ago or four years ago, whenever it was, when we were flying over there by Walmart. Yeah, that's right. You took the battery out and then it came wafting down. <laughs> um, I didn't want to do anything hard because this one, it uses, um, it, it's using Velcro uh, to hold the latch down. And I made sure that I have it going against the, um, it's not sitting on the laminate. I have it glued to the uh, actual EPP. So it should hold better, uh, but I just don't. I just don't trust it, right? So you know, I didn't want to get hard. You know, yeah, I do have a, a bit of trust issues. So I did not want to fling out the battery, uh, doing anything super crazy. Um, so I, you know, I I didn't go nuts on it. Um, I did. So so overall, the plane the the plane flies great. Flies nice and stable. Um, you know, on a three cell, it, it buzzes around, I don't know, maybe about 80 miles an hour. Unfortunately, like I said, I, I had a problem with the, I had an E, I have an E-Flight uh, uh, 40 uh, 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 speed controller in it. Almost had a speed controller yeah, inside of it. And, and unfortunately, I, I can't turn the brake off or turn wow. the brake on, excuse me. And so since I can't turn the brake on, yeah. it's, you know, it's constantly spinning. Uh, so I'm trying, I'm coming in and I'm trying to land it and I get it as slow as I can get it and I'm trying to flare it. So it's just, you know, so I can just pop it on the ground and, oh, man, it's just, you know, and I'm like, Oh, don't break the prop. Don't break the prop. Don't break the prop. Oh, right. didn't break the prop. So, uh, today, uh, I wanted to fly it on 4S cause it can fly it on either three uh, 3S or 4S on the same setup. So, uh, I got out there and, uh, tried it on 4S and let's just say 4S makes everything better. Of course it does. So, like I said, 3S, you know, it, it cruises around nice. It, I'm used to ours. So when you get that sure. vertical punch that we get out of our right, tough wing, right. you don't get that out of this tough, out of the spec wing. Yeah, but that's yeah. because of that motor. Well, we, yeah. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure if you, I don't know what the gram for gram weight change is, but if you switched it for the 2200 that we use. Yeah, it, sure it, it, would I would, just them. looking at them, the two motors, I'd say it's half the weight of the other one. Oh really? Wow! Oh Holy yeah, crap. It, it's it's freaking small. But it's the small same. Motor. Was it the same winding and specs? Like it was a twenty. No. What was ours? A twenty-eight. Twenty-two. Twenty-seven. Well, yeah. Twenty. Depends on what you got. I think I. Well, I think mine has the twenty-two hundred. Yeah, because I ran that. Ran a bigger prop. Twenty-seven hundred kV. Yeah, twenty-seven hundred. Six-six yeah. prop. So, and you're running one. Yeah. Five-five prop. A five-five, and it's so you should have a higher kV then. Um. It's no, thirty two in it, Jay. It's uh it's thirty four inch wingspan. It's uh um, No, it's a thirty two hundred K V, isn't it? No, it's not. Hold on. I'll tell you right here. Uh where are the specs. It is it is. I have a six by four prop on there. It where's the stupid uh 
Okay, the motor is a T motor. It's a T motor AT twenty three ten. Oh, twenty three hundred. Twenty three hundred. Less KV with a smaller prop. Okay. With a bigger prop. Oh, you're it, it runs a six four. It runs a six four prop on it. Yeah, I'm running a six six. No, we run a five five, Mike. Mm. Five by five is what we run on the tough wings. I run a seven on mine. No. Yes. Okay. Your tough wing's sitting right there. Go get it. I know it says five five. It's five five. I don't have to go get it because I I, I I I got a whole bunch of the props right here. He's gonna look at it and go. Uh, oh, this is a six point six prop. Look, here are all the props that you bought for me. Five by five. Oh, it's a five by five prop. Wow. Okay. Yes. Well. Yes. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? All right. Well, then that does. Are you guys done? Sense. Yes. <laughs> we are. Yes, we are. It's like an old Sorry. married couple. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so uh, definitely 4S makes everything better. It it definitely wakes it up a lot more. It makes it a little more livelier. Uh, for me, it was more like flying the old Tough Wing, so I like that a lot more. Uh, but for, like, what it's supposed to be used for, for being FPV flying, I think that the, uh, you know, having, having the 3S set up like it is, I think it would be fine because it, you know, it's stable enough that you can get down low and slow and be, you know, whipping through the trees or doing whatever with that, it would be perfectly fine. So, but unfortunately, this, the way I built, I configured or built this one is without the FPV nose. We oh. got, we got the solid, the solid nose, because that's what Scott had ordered originally. So, that, so. That, does that change the CG or does it make it lighter in the nose? Did you have to add any weight or anything? No, I didn't have to add any weight. So, so. the nose just compensated for the FPV stuff. Um, I'd say I'd say has. no. Um, because okay, so when I I don't have my I don't have the wing here in front of me, but uh, the the way you're supposed to configure this is uh, right right out. You know, you have the motor, then you have the motor mount, and then you have the the bay. Um, and so the way it normally works, you have there's a hole in the motor mount on the top of the motor mount. That's where the speed controller is supposed to go, right there. And then you then you put the uh, zip tie on top of it and hold it down that way, and it sits in the airstream. All right, and uh, then it, it uses the airstream to cool it. Then to cool it, yeah. and then after when you go first into the bay, that's where all the stuff for your receivers for your video gear is supposed to go. Right, and that the, the first base is all is all that stuff. Right, and then your battery, and then and then the camera goes in the nose, so that compensates a little bit for the for the stuff. So I, I moved I moved the uh, speed controller into that bay instead of having it sit out because I wanted. Normally, they want you to have a quad uh, speed controller, you know, on this thing, right? Which is smaller and lighter. Oh, yeah. I didn't want that because I wanted a break. Oh, uh, right. I like having a break, so I wanted an airplane one. So those are bigger, and, you know, I was just like, okay, I don't need to have that big old thing hanging out in the wind. Let me put it in the bay, and it worked And it worked out perfect. It was able to move the weight forward, you know, and everything balanced out. You know, so since I don't have the extra 20 grams or so for the uh, camera stuff right. up in the nose, it just all worked out. So. Wow, cool. that's cool. That's amazing. Yeah. So you, well, like, you like it then? I, I do I, I I like it but um, you know I still have to say that that's my that's my favorite. Oops. Yeah, your go to. Go. Yeah. Well, but I mean, you know, each wing is going to fly. You you like flying zaggies and oh yeah yeah no zaggies without a doubt. Fun, but they're little floaters. They're not right. speed demons. And you know, the tough wing was one of those things. It it's got some history to it. And you know, I I love mine too. I've got two of them because uh, you know they're just so much fun. So it, I know I, I smile every time I fly mine. Oh yeah. I mean, it's just hard not to, cause it's just, I love the sound it makes when it comes down. I love flying over the Jay's head when it's <laughs> and he's got his back turned. I'm it, turning it on really. Yeah. Just, meow. it's got that pouring on the coals over the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. I love the vertical and the tumble and all that kind of good stuff. It's really fun to do. Jay, right. you probably remember that Valley we used to fly in, in, in Alaska. Um, one of my favorite things about that spot was the echo. Yeah. 
you you would zip from left to right or right to left to the field, and you'd be like, rear, rear. <laughs> it's like, yeah. wow, there's two of them. It yeah. was it was really pretty cool actually. That, and then you would, if you were down a ways, it would be like you'd hear this. It's like, where is that thing? And I knew it was because I was flying, and people were like looking around because it was just echoing off of everything it's like where is that thing and then re- where, it where the, was the point where we the three of us went and flew where we did all that ridge soaring stuff oh, oh that, that was that was, uh, that was the, uh, the motorcycle park near the airport yeah. yeah yeah that that was fun i liked that place because you could go down towards the water so you were standing on a how how far was that i mean that was god it must have been a couple hundred feet oh, easy yeah, big easy bluff. Yeah, it's Easy. a huge bluff. And to fly down and it, into the water and then just uh-huh. kind of zipping underneath. I mean, that thing is uh-huh. way below you. And then just yeah, come right up the it. side, hoping you don't hit the side because yeah. so, you're never going down there to get it. Or yeah, if you are, it's going to be a two-hour <laughs> walk. Yeah, <laughs> a climb down and a climb back up. With a, with a salt water filled. Uh, uh, That's it. And the uh, and hopefully the tide was out at the time. <laughs> You'd be swimming. I, I remember a couple of times with like, you know, having engine outs. We'd be flying, we'd be flying around. And all of a sudden, if they go, rrr, rrr, rrr. oh no, do I still have control? Okay, I got control. <laughs> Guess there's something wrong with the, the ESC. Yeah, but, yeah. I hope it makes it back. You know? Well, that was fun. And yours just floated around, man. I remember flying up there. It just would just, it would just hit that ridge, that wind, and just kind of just hang. And then Jay and I flew ours in New Mexico. We've told that story more than once, but uh, we ridge oh, yeah. floated on the, on the dam before the cops chased us away. But uh yeah well good i'm uh i'm glad i'm i'm looking forward to flying it myself i'd like to get a you know get my hands on it and yeah, see. So. well hopefully we can get brian on the show uh he's the guy that made these um i i've been trying to get hold of him but uh i we just keep messing missing each other i mean uh you know like i said my buddy scott has talked to him several times right, you know right. told him about the show and everything and he sounds interested so hopefully hey now well, brian if you're listening, if you're listening, give us a call Yep. Give us a call, 830-444-4943, or uh, jump on our uh, parkflyerpodcast at gmail.com. Let us know, because uh, we sure enjoy flying your products. So that's kind of cool. Heck yeah. Speaking of products, I think another one showed up in your front door. <laughs> uh, what's that? What? Did you get another product that showed up at your front door? Uh, Did you get something else? I don't know. Can you give me a hint? Did you start vaping, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> no. I thought you got a. I thought you got a shake and bake airplane where you shake the box and it falls together. Did you? Oh no! Well, sorta. So uh, once again, that's uh, uh, due to, due to Scott, my neighbor. Right. Uh, he just got a uh, new glider, uh, which which uh, I figured we'd talk about it another time because it's quite remarkable, um, and it truly was. He he you know he let me put it together for uh i think this is one of these that's going to be a pretty good relationship right he, he gets a plane and he gets put together because you know yeah. <laughs> we we need something to talk this about is, on the show is little, right? so this get is the... a little reverse from tim right yeah. tim yeah. Put it together <laughs> right. give him to you to fly right <laughs> well that's cool um we can always talk about that another time but you were having some issues i, I think you were asking us this week about uh, some of the spectrum programs that uh you're right, right. Well, it all it all came up from the spec wing, right? So okay. one of the things uh, that uh, I got with when uh, Scott gave me the plane, um, so you know he gave me the motor and uh, uh, motor and escape uh, ESC combo, plus he he got me a receiver and the the receiver is a AR six twenty, I do believe. So it's a brand new uh, antennaless receiver. And supposedly it can do all sorts of mysterious things. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So it has some telemetry uh, capabilities, and and supposedly with the E Flight uh, speed controller, it was able to um, talk to the receiver. So I was like, oh, well, that that's kind of cool. So I was tr- looking up some stuff on what I had to do to configure this all. You know, uh, so I got a, I got on my radio. I have a, a DX9. And so normally if you have some sort of something that has telemetry, um, uh, there's a little, there's a little button there uh, or a menu and it, it auto configs it, right? It goes out and searches for right. whatever modules are out there and, you know, brings it up. And when I did that, got a big fat nothing. And I'm like, okay, I may have to figure this out what, what's going on. And so as I started delving into this and looking at the YouTube's, um, trying to figure this thing out 
I just realized that I guess living here in Texas after moving down here, I've definitely been in a little bubble. Um, and there's a whole bunch of yeah. products that have popped up, uh, you know, since then, um, where that allow that, that, you know, that they're calling it smart technology that allows the, everything from the batteries to a bunch of the receivers, um, you know, upgrades for, uh, the radios that are allowing them to talk a lot more, um, that the you receivers like are coming with more stuff in them from, uh, Vario, vario, variometers to, you know, uh, to telling you, you know, what the current's doing, what, you know, the capacity is doing, how many times you charge the battery, yada, 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 yada. You know, if you have the smart technology batteries, by the way. Right. So, yeah. So I, I, I kind of delved in it and, and unfortunately I, what's, I, I didn't get to play with it per se because I still have to update my radio Right. And I have to update the receiver. And so right. to update the receiver, you need, um, a, you know, a, what would be a good word for that? Uh, a gadget, a, a contraption. A um, cable or a box. Basically, it's a new cable. Uh, it's basically a USB to, you know, not a serial port, but uh, USB to, you know, uh, the servo end connector uh, thingamabob. So I don't have one of those. So, so unfortunately. So this is, you know, and, and it, it's kind of funny that you were somewhat unaware of it. I think I've talked about it before, but th this is not new technology. It's been out for a little while, but uh, the, the Spectrum group from uh, eFlight Hobbies has come out with their Spectrum line of battery, smart batteries, smart ESCs, and smart receivers. And, you know, the receivers for the park flying or what they call sport flying, has continued to get smaller and smaller and become antennaless because the 2.4 gigahertz signals uh, they can actually transmit internally. The problem with that is is that a lot of those um, you know may have interference if they're around carbon fiber, metal, any of those type things. Right. And so uh, they allow a lot of the spectrum receivers now allow you to plug in satellite receivers and stretch those out and they sell cables that can be, you know, 10 to 12, 15, 18 inches. And you can put these little satellite receivers all over your airplane and still have, you know, just this little, I would say it's no bigger than a postage stamp. Uh, those of you that have kind of used them or are familiar with them, you know, have seen them and uh, it debuted, I guess, two years ago. That's, you know, this is probably why it didn't hit your radar right away, Jay, because you missed one of the Arizona Electric Festivals. Oh, that's right. That's one of my mom had uh, yeah. Yeah, heart surgery. My mom had heart surgery. Tim Hanstein from um, Northwest RC actually brought some down and put them in the big airplane. He had a big 120-inch. He put one of those sport receivers in there, and somebody asked him, how far would that go? So leave it to Tim, you know, he just took off and flew that thing cause it was big. So he could fly it really far away. And, uh, he got it to where you almost couldn't see that 120 inches anymore. And he was wow. still, you know, I, I mean, of course he owns a company, so he can afford to you know, throw those airplanes away if he wants, but you know, he tested it and he was flying low to the ground and high and rolling it. Now I will tell you, he had about five satellite receivers on that thing, but he did it with the sport receiver. So, um, it, I think I was, I was thinking we probably should get, um, like one of those quad controllers for big Mike mm -hmm. and put it in his, um, 3d plane so that when it gets flying way past where we can see it anymore, he can just like return to home. Oh, there and you it go. Come flying it back this way. Back. <laughs> yeah. He's actually gotten much better at it. Uh, no, I know. I'm teasing. The panicking courses. thing I think has gotten yeah. uh, taken hold. Well, I mean, that's, that's a, it's a tough nut to crack for a lot of people. Yeah, that is true. So, so they've come out with these antennaless, uh, small postage stamps style, and they're able to pack more and more stuff in it. And so as a result, uh, telemetry was one of those things that the lemon guys, uh, you know, the lemon receiver guys have come out with, uh, a couple other companies have. And so Spectrum decided, hey, we should do the same thing. So they jumped onto the ESCs, made it a smart technology. So where the battery contains information that can send to through the ESC, and then the ESC will once again talk to the receiver, and the receiver will transmit all that in the form right. of telemetry. 
And, and, and I got a chance to see one of the batteries because I had never, because once again, Scott had gotten some of the smart batteries, right? Mm-hmm. And so he was like, yeah, I got the smart batteries, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, what's a smart battery? And I thought he was just talking about the balance plug connector, you know, being oh, the right. smart part. But I didn't realize, because I, I even went on the website and I looked at it and I'm just like, okay, I, I don't what's see the what's the difference is. Right. But I didn't well, see that it, there was a third wire. Alpha, I didn't like, see the I'm third like, wire. Yeah, yeah most yeah, so there's a little thin, you know, because they were showing the regular EX60 type connector. I'm like, what's the big difference? But there's a there's a little hole in the middle, and that's where the third wire goes. Correct. Yeah. Um, that that where you know that's where all the information for the battery is going through itself. And uh, yeah, so after I saw that, and then I I kind of looked at what information's coming across, and or you know the part that I thought was, I think it's cool, and neat and everything. I, I don't know if it's for everybody. A because you have to have their charger, and for yeah, like to, it's proprietary. You have to have every right, charger, which which is battery. fine, right? I, I have no problems with that. So let's just take you two guys. I would say for you, AZ Mike, you you wouldn't get this system. Why not? Okay, not because you're not smart enough. Well, um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll be smart enough. No, it's because so you guys you, aren't done yet. I've okay. seen it work. Right? No, it's it's because when you go and you're flying, how many battery, how many big batteries of five thousand milliamp six cells do you go through and charge up at a at a time uh, when you're flying? Oh, I have probably twelve or yeah. But how many are how many are you cycling through at a time when you're doing like it? four eight, uh, eight, four eight yeah, yeah eight, eight, eight at yeah. a time right eight at a time right. Well, the biggest charger they have is two, being able to charge two right. batteries at, right. at a time, oh, and that's oh, barely right. at eight eight C. You know, yeah, it takes split between the two of them, right? right. So, you know, that's, you know, I, you'd be laughing like, Whoa, I don't have all day to charge batteries. Right. Who has time for that? Right. Now, I would think that AK Mike might go for this setup for a couple of reasons. A, he he's not having the, you know, when he flies, he's not normally charging eight batteries at a time, you know. So charging two batteries at a time at the field or doing whatever probably would be fine. Or when he got back home, it would be fine. Two, He's the kind of guy that would really get into the information that you that you'd be able to get from the batteries. Now, I think you would be too, but um, the part that I thought was interesting to me anyway was just you know when was the last time you charged the battery? The battery the battery can do its own self discharge. That right. part I thought was kind of cool. Right. Um, it it tells you everything about the battery the last time you charged it, how much you charged it, if there anything funny happened, and you can store all that information on there you know, to, to get back later. So you can, you, I mean, you can make a chart and be able to see everything that happened with that battery. Whether now, you this, is, the, this is humorous to me because this technology isn't new all the way around. What, what's the, what, what brand do you use? What's what do you mean? Do you use? I just want to say, he just called me a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> what's, <laughs> and what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with And what's that. wrong with that? I just want to be, I just want to be clear. Like, like if anybody was you wondering, know, did he just uh, call me a nerd? No, yes, he, he did. did. That's right. I did call he you did. a nerd. And last time I, I watched, you know, I saw most nerds can make it rain. Yeah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Getting that nerd money. <laughs> I'm a nerd for a reason. And guess what kind of job I have? I've retired mm-hmm. my propeller hat, though. Man. I just want that's to let you know. I'm, that's retired. all I'm saying. It's a I'm old enough now to not wear the propeller hat anymore. So <laughs> I've graduated. I don't need it. I graduated from just this straight old bald head. That's go. right. So, what is the brand of your charger? Do you remember? Mine? No, Jay's. Um, the FM the FM uh, FMA charger. FMA charger, right? Yeah. And several many years ago, FMA came out with a little quarter size button that you yes put, yes and, and that you put on the battery itself, and then you just laid that on a little like your wireless charger, and it would it would send all that information to your yeah it was a little rf it was a little rf chip yeah kind of like the kind that you have now they have the now they have it all incorporated into the actual chargers right so you and i use the the labs right the the cell pro four uh their newer technology for the cell pro eights have that information so when you plug the battery in you can name the battery it'll it'll when you plug it in, it'll say, "Oh, this is battery number one," and it'll keep all that information. Yeah, and, and plus they they also had a uh, once again they also had a, a little cable as well that, that you could plug into the charger, so you could plug into your computer, so that you can keep a spreadsheet That's of right. the batteries and monitor all your stuff. You know, they're just making it a lot easier. The 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 part 
like I said, that I have a problem with is just that uh, that stuff's really cool, but the way we charge the batteries and we do stuff, you know, we take a generator a generator out with us. We bring our, you know, chargers, charge them up quick, da 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 We're not going to go and go from, you know, get the smart technology, get a charger that only charges two batteries. You know, we're not going to degrade to get this upgrade. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's why I'm saying it just... Yeah. It, it, unless they come out with something, you know, where you, you can do parallel charging and then it can still keep track of that stuff, that'd be great. I, but because I, they don't I, have a parallel charger. You, you know. I will tell you also that that particular charger from Spectrum that does the two batteries mm -hmm. is not a 24 volt charger. Just FYI. Oh, okay. Did not okay. know that. We know that the hard way because Tony plugged his in. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know that the hard way. I remember that that story. That was that. <laughs> Smoke and smoke and suit. Tony walked over the big battery charger box there. It's all 24 oh, volt. No. He said, hey, does this thing, uh, can I plug this in? Yeah, right there in that port. <laughs> Zap. Because it's only a 12 volt charger. So you yeah, make sure, yeah. you know, whatever. The, in, power, the input voltage, it doesn't go to 24 volts. Correct. And yeah, my system sits at 24 all the time. So, I mean, even the USB cable, you know, the USB port is 24 volts. So it'll, you know, change I, it to that five amps or whatever. But I just want to add further to my defense that uh, just because I'm curious, uh, and ask a lot of questions. Go Never ahead. Mind. Never mind. Uh, yeah, he's he's still. I don't know. You should be proud to be a nerd. We would all be. That's proud. right. Where would no, pride? Dude. Fine. I, I'm just playing. It's all uh, playing. A compliment <laughs> in our in our social circle. Okay, just the three of us though. Outside <laughs> of this, yeah, it's totally else. not. We won't yeah. tell anybody. No, no. Outside of this, outside of this, we bring it to the comedy club. Yeah. I mean, this is all good stuff. Page, right there. Oh, page is gonna blow up now. Uh, we could probably just give it to Aussie man. He'd do something with it. There you sure go. Will. Exactly. Been on those videos all week. Thanks a lot. Um, so anyway, <laughs> the spectrum technology now, you know, kind of has caught up to a lot of the FMA chargers and the, the smart chargers that have come out that can actually maintain all that information. Um, and they're just, you know, they're just making it easier. The new uh, spectrum IX 20 uh, it actually can read all of that information right out of the box and, you know, you can log it all and you can, you know, take it. Are, are you saying, are you saying that it, well, I mean, are you talking about specific receivers though, that would transmit that telemetry, right? The, right. The there's only, there's, yeah, there's only there's certain ones that can do it. Right. Right. I mean, cause Not you can't do it with any of the old spectrum stuff, right? You can't do it with all the old spectrum ones. And there's a good number of them that do have telemetry, but if I remember right, there were special specific transmitter okay, so right, you had to use the that, yeah that, but we need to be we need to clarify what's telemetry and i mean you know what telemetry parameters because the smart technology batteries plugged into a smart esc will transmit voltage information right right and, it, and that transmits variometer won't transmit right. altitude or speed you have to buy a, a an actual receiver that has that in it but you can still get voltages, uh, right? Because they're put, they're just pasting in one of the open channels that you correct. wouldn't have on a normal receiver like that. Correct. And the radio says, "Oh, look, we get telemetry coming off this channel." Correct. Blah blah blah, and then so, managing that. So the new uh, the new receivers are kind of interesting because they're 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 not they're kind of similar to uh, the FreeSky receivers in the sense that, all right, so it used to be you bought a four channel receiver. That's all you had four channels. Right. No more, no less. Now, when you get a four-channel receiver, you may have a five-channel receiver, right? So that four-channel receiver may have a fifth channel or a sixth channel, you know, that you can actually configure and use to do something else. You can configure it on your radio to do something, you know. So that that part's kind of cool. Like one of the examples I saw was uh, with the smart with the smart ESCs, you're able to uh, reverse the throttle, uh, you know, so you can make it run the you know, for running clockwise, you can make it run counterclockwise. Correct. And then you can put it on a switch. Sweet. You know, even though it's a four channel receiver, you you know, you've still got that fifth channel to do that with. So I'm flying straight to the ground, flick the switch, work, it'll go That's backwards. Right. Hover and then land well, on, just land on the wheel. So you mentioned Big Mike earlier, you know, on his big uh jet, the the yeah, that's what he does on his. It's got a reverse switch on it. So his will actually have the the EDFs going one way when you land. You shut them off, flip the switch, and they immediately spool up the other direction. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yep. so it's a, it's a basically a reverse short field landing. Right. Yeah. It's so a, 
that to me is really cool that you're able to, you know, you're getting a, a couple of free channels to do things like that with, which I think is really neat. Now, the biggest, <laughs> this, this really sounds stupid, but the biggest thing I like about my receiver is no bind plug. That's correct. It's a button. It's a button. Mm-hmm. And, you know, once again, uh, since I have a free sky radio, like their receivers have these buttons, but it's this microscopic button that it's impossible yeah. to hold the button down, <laughs> touch your radio, right. and then grab the battery with your foot. And then you're trying to connect it and do it all at the same time and plug it in and pull the buttons and doing everything. Some of it's, them were ill-conceived. I yeah, been. it's crazy. This one? They were a hindsight. It's, it's, and it's no tiny button. It's, in fact, I was like, they were like a button. I'm looking at the. It's like old man button size. That's awesome. Yeah. It's old man. It's, I, I'm looking at the case and I'm like, I don't see a button on the, you know, what I have to poke something in and press it or something. And all of a sudden I'm like squeezing and I go, I hear a click, click. I go, what? Oh, Hey, the whole side here. This is a little, this little indentation, this whole thing's a button. Click. Press it with my big old gorilla finger. (laughs) Click. Ding, it goes into you know uh, Jay that mode. you said that now makes me think we could probably 3D print some stuff that would fit on our current receivers where we have to press the button that's way the heck in there uh-huh. to do that same idea. Yeah, how oh. many times do you have to rebind your airplane though? Not very uh, often, but I mean, uh, you know, then it would be like a clip-on thing you just stick uh, on there and then. So. All right, well there you go. See that nerd stuff is coming out already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant! <laughs> I knew it was going to just fall out any second. I'm the idea. That's man. right, man. Just making it, just making it happen. <laughs> Make it rain. That's it. Uh, that's <laughs> funny. Well, the yeah, the uh, the bind that that's the reason one of the or one of the reasons that you're getting an extra port there, Jay, is because if you remember all the old Spectrum uh, from way back when we had the 6300s or whatever, right? They'd eat they, up that one bind. Eat up yeah. because you have a bind port, and so you'd have to put the plug in, and then you really couldn't use that plug for anything but binding. Well, on some of the later on, they just said, you know, some of the bigger receivers, they were like, oh, well, we can, if you if you jumper it like a bind plug, we'll use it as a bind plug. But if you plug three wires in it instead of two, we can actually use it as another channel. So I have actually some, I think an 8100 maybe or 8250 or whatever it was that they came out where you could use actually the bind plug as another port if you wanted to use it for something. Oh, that's kind of cool. I'm pretty sure my my uh, FRS guy's been doing doing that for a while. Too. Probably so. But I'm just saying, mm-hmm. once again, you know, Spectrum's catching up with that, and so yeah. uh, and then now they don't even need it because they've actually just installed a button on the side of the receiver. Some of the bigger ones, you know, they just have a little a little button that you push, and uh, you know, it binds automatically. Yeah, I I just I that to me was the, you know I was like oh why they do this you know. Ten years ago. Now, now here's the that. interesting thing too, because what is the one, number one rule we always tell new pilots that what is uh, the first rule to learn is the the sequence of which you turn your radios on. You turn your radio on, plug in your right. airplane, plug in your airplane, yeah, and then, you know do your testing. In this new systems, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If, it doesn't matter if you plug your airplane in. Or turn your radio on first. Doesn't matter. Now we do this because we have old systems, and that's a safety function for us learning the hard way. When your airplane takes off to the parking lot because you plugged it in before you turn your radio on, <laughs> but the new technology systems that Spectrum has come out, that new receiver that you have, has a model match and a DSM X, and DSM X will not connect until it sees that it has a DSM X, a DSM X. Connection. Uh, connection. So the way that you can test some of your, because uh, now that yours, I think yours came with a fail safe too, right? Which is the new, a lot, yeah. of, some of the receivers come with that, but uh, this one you can actually change, you know, you can, some of them are just uh, either the last known input or they can go to a neutral input. And mm-hmm. the way you test that is to plug the airplane in, you know, move the sticks one way, turn the radio off. And then it'll yeah. go click and go right back to the fail safe. And then when you That's turn it back on, thing. then uh, I know, right? Then when you turn it back on, make sure your prop is off, though. <laughs> I know we're saying, you know, it doesn't matter, but still take Jake, can off. you put a little safety thing there? Safety. Yeah. Safety. 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 Okay, I could do that. You take the prop off. But uh, so, yeah, when you're testing it like that, but it, it's it's the newest technology where it really doesn't matter. Although I would caution you that unless you have a specific you know, 
that specific receiver for the newest ones, I, I still wouldn't do it. it it's, it's so there's some and- unintended unintended consequences that could occur here, right? What's that? If you get new people using the new year with these safety, correct? With all this kind of cool stuff that goes on, and then he, and then a guy says, "Oh, I'm going to get this older radio," and then right. he gets it, and he didn't have the right, you know, procedures in place right. to manage that new thing. He's like. Turns on want. I was like, ow, you know, I hurt right. myself. Right. It's like, yeah, uh, you know, back around, uh, you yeah. know, 2020. God, <laughs> six. <laughs> yeah, 2018, actually. It's Whatever, you know, I'm just yeah. saying, you know, back, back, back in the day. Right. We used to cut our hands every time we turned the thing on. Well, I mean, think about it. <laughs> He's old enough to my finger. Uh, you know, back in the day, we used to have to turn our radios in, too. I mean, yeah, you know, we could yeah. only have two or three people flying. Oh, I remember I that. I had, you know, I had a 72 megahertz radio. I had to go stick it on the stand. I mean, that was my we're talking about real pirates here who would take the 72 megahertz crystal and swap them out. There That's you know. serious, That's serious it. pirate stuff right there. I saw many guys get shot down because somebody walked on the thing and flipped their radio on. And, right. You know, now everybody's yeah. flying there. I hate Billy. <laughs> click. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was vindictive. <laughs> I didn't ever oh. hear anybody say, yeah, watch this, you know. <laughs> Here, hold my beer. Right. Is that, isn't that where that started? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But it, it's it's still, it's amazing. So, um, you know, some of these receivers that are coming out, the newer ones, they have the, you know, the ASX3 built in. They have the fail safes built in. They've got the new, uh, whatever that technology, it's the, what do they call it? The training technology. I'm talking about uh, gyros? No, it's the one where it uh, writes itself. I think they call it the. It's on the newer e-flight airplanes. The AS3X is all what I remember. Yeah, that's the the system that causes it. Yeah, yeah. but it's like a panic button or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a. It's like a. Uh, I can't even remember. But anyway, it's a system that you can turn on, and it's got three modes. One's a beginner mode that only allows the airplane to do certain things. Then you can go to the expert mode where you can actually fly inverted. That's the uh, CRS stuff, right? Yeah, it's uh, can't it, remember it's stuff. safe. That's what it's called, safe, S A F E. So it's a safe technology, and it basically it, it runs the airplane, but it's in the it's built into the receiver as well. So, uh-huh. um, so th- they're really coming along, but you know, it's to the point now where I'm kind of like Jay. I've, I have my airplanes that you know I haven't really gotten anything new where I've used brand spanking new technology or had a need for it. I'm not. I'm not crashing airplanes at the same rate that i was when i first started right so i don't have to go out and buy new equipment because i just burned it all up <laughs> you know at the it's almost time. too hard to do it these days i mean it with new gear difficult, because of safe because, because of other stuff yeah, i mean you can almost land those planes without any kind of input no almost i mean and i mean we we, we flew my uh we flew my uh fundraiser right. that way yeah remember we put that lemon receiver in it and yeah. then and then it was like okay hands off and then just watch that thing just sort yep. of float to the ground, in. nice and level. Flew yeah. right to the ground and kept it, yeah, you know, kept it going. So crazy. And and you know, and it's a good technology because I think it's going to bring more people to the hobby. Um, but at the same time, I think a little bit. It's like being a, a an airline guy, right? I mean, we have so many new, um, t- so much new technology available in the pilot and real pilot world that I think some of those old, you know, stick and rudder skills kind of went away. And not, not that, you know, guys won't learn, but it's just, you know, it's kind of like you had to learn that how many people can drive a stick shift in today's world, right? I mean, there's, the, I mean, if you went to a dealership to buy a new car, would you, could you even find one with a manual transmission? I think you have to order one. Yeah, I think so too. Special order. Special, special order and it costs more money. Right. Well, because you have to special order it. Now, I'm not saying that you couldn't buy, uh, you know, my kid's car. Uh, his has paddle shifters and a bunch of other stuff. You can put it in a manual and kind of do that thing, but you're still not putting a clutch, pulling a lever, you know, that kind of thing. It's a still automatic, you know, where you just click the buttons. But, but, but well, I mean, I, the oh, technology I, that comes into Tesla these days are, is oh, going to yeah. be yeah. Know, more and more the norm as time goes by. Right? And I think you're right. You know, they, they're already getting, what is it, the auto track or auto cruise or whatever it is where you're supposed to be able to yeah yeah i've driven one of those cars it's very cool yeah where it kind of senses where you are slows down with the car in front of you so i think if i think if our you know our hobby gets that goes that direction i i think it just allows more and more people to get in so I, sure. I, i'm happy with that but um we can get it down to three years old yeah yeah right? yeah three three 
three years or three years and up, right, on the side of the bus. I mean, because here's Bobby trying to crash the plane like any three-year-old would, right? It's like, is, sorry, uh, dude, yeah, yeah. you got safe technology. You can't do it. Yeah. Too bad. Yeah. That's funny. That's I'm awesome. sorry, Dave. I can't allow you to do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, will, yeah, uh, only people who are 40 that, and older will know what that reference was. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Sorry. I don't know that. <laughs> well, uh, our time is kind of growing short. We're going to have to go here in a second. But um, I will tell you that uh, I was on the eFlight uh, website the other day looking at real flight. Nine, I think it's 9 now, 9.5 maybe. Wow. It is amazing. Uh, eFlight has pretty much now – added all of their airplanes all of the uh the little micros i mean they're they're starting to add more and more and more of the airplanes to the real flight simulators so if it's if you are interested it looks like it's pretty much you can get the airplane fly the airplane on the simulator go out and buy the airplane and it is it's truly amazing and you know the the amount of people that are modifying the airplanes that are currently there uh is truly amazing as well so and now, well, you know, it's coming to a yeah. point too, just like in in our three D printer world, where anybody can really design a, a part mm-hmm. because you can use a tool like Tinkercad. Correct. It's coming that way with planes too. There's plenty of software out there where you can, you know, do real time design. Right. Uh, figure, you know, it won't be it won't be super, uh, you know, specific or whatever, but you can still do real time design. It's like, yeah, this is a rock with wings. It'll fly. You know, right. you just need to put a big enough motor on the front. You know, and I, and I can improve that out by putting in this design program and find out, Right. you know, so, you know, here we go. Well, it, it's, you know, it, I, I think that's the mother of all invention, right? You know, I mean, they just, you give somebody an idea and you just see what falls out. And everybody uh-huh. that's kind of getting this new technology, they're going to come up with even better ways to do things. Sure, sure. I think it's just going to be one of those amazing futures. As Yeah, it, I, it's my, my only beef with it is. You know, I've already invested X amount of dollars <laughs> into the old technology, and then it's like, uh, who's going to buy it? Well, I, well not j- just but, that. It's also when when do I jump? When do I jump in and change out and get a new receiver or get a new radio or get you know a, you change my batteries you. over? I, you well, know. I think I think that you know that's just like anything. Uh, when when you see new technology come along, you typically trade it out as a replacement to to um, the stuff that you're currently using as it dies, mm-hmm. and that's what you that's what you typically do. And and so in some cases, it might force you to have a painful moment of spending some extra money to get gear to support what you have. Um, but you know, I'm going to drive most of the stuff I have till it's absolute death. Right, right. Ooh, which bring, which bring good segue. Good segue. Uh, okay. So one of the problems I was having, like I told you before, was that that e flight speed controller. I don't have the cable to change it to, so I can go in there because the it's not working yeah. for the radio. The, I can't change anything through the radio. It's something right. is not working. But you can get a cable and the software mm-hmm. to go in there and change it. Problem is, it happens to be the first version of it, right? So now they have version two of that forty forty five amp. Uh, ESC, but they don't make the cable or sell the software anymore. Uh-huh. Off of eFlight, it's discontinued. Yeah, you got to you got to change out your escape or ESC. Sorry, ah, uh, drink. And so, so anyway, you know, it's just one of those things. I, I'm I, it it baffles because the thing's brand new, right? But because yeah. it it has this problem, not that I can't use it, it still works. It's but just that in this configuration, to version two though, right? I thought What's that, was that? The point you can upgrade it to the the firmware to version two. Not without the cable and software. Not without the cable. How are you, you can't get the cable. They don't sell it anymore. No, they sell a. It's, they sell a box. It's a programming nope. box. That, no, it doesn't no, work. He's doesn't saying work he's saying this. doesn't have any more. They as soon as they went to version two, they stopped selling and making that other thing. So unless you can find it on the aftermarket or if somebody that you know has right. it, or at some old you know, uh, store or something. Unless somebody wants to tell us we're wrong and call us at eight three zero four 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 nine four three and tell us. Yeah. I, that, that would be good if you know, not right because i don't know if that's right or not i mean because jay is getting older and yeah, it's he possible forget- he's forgetting stuff that's true i know i'm getting older so that's for sure yeah i forgot to put my pants on so, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's why he didn't want to get up and show you the the wing earlier that, Mike, yeah, so. yeah. Didn't want to get out i was glad he did. didn't yeah, Who took you, my jay. pants? i really appreciate it. this is a family friendly show and <laughs> yeah, we're trying to keep it that would not be mm, that's funny 
Well, if you, uh, I guess if you're out there in uh, podcast land and you're uh, familiar with uh, the cable or you have one or you'd like to sell one to Jay, please get <laughs> for a hundred dollars, a hundred million dollars. <laughs> exactly. So, oh my gosh, where did this hour go? We were talking and now it's like, pff, my time it's gone. gone. I know. I'm just like, holy smokes. Well, the good news is the weather's getting warmer here. The weather's getting better there. I think we'll be out flying a little bit more. Um, I've got a couple of calls already you know, from the guys going, hey, man, get out to the field. The weather's great. And um, I think it help us to the point where I'm, I'm able to get out there. I'm kind of organized a little bit better now as well. And uh, so I'm trying to get you know, my stuff and start kind of headed out there. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get out there and get some flying done. Research on that. Uh, I'm going to take a second here to talk about your new place a little bit. And if I was, if it was me and I was building that house, I'd be like, yeah, you guys done with the hobby room yet? Because I'd like to start moving stuff in there right now. Yeah, actually, I know. <laughs> Can we change the priorities around like the kitchen? Just do last, please. <laughs> and then we... Well, you know, that part of wait, the wait, house wait. is totally separate. Can, can Arlie heal me? I just no, did, she can't. I don't want to, if she heard me, yeah. <laughs> she okay. didn't hear you. Uh, but that part, yeah, actually, that's true. The, that part of the shop uh, and the garages are separate from the other house. So I could have, everybody asked me, why didn't you finish those first? And I'm like, well, it's, you know, it's all under one permit, so you kind of have to do everything together. So, yeah. But we're pushing really hard to, uh, to get into it by July. So things are moving along. Well, good. Good. I'll keep everybody updated. So I, I know, and uh, if you've been watching our YouTube channel, if you haven't been watching, go over to the YouTube channel. But if you have been watching our YouTube channel, you'll see that uh, I've uh, been on vacation, so I've had a little bit of a growth kind of change. You become evil, Mike. <laughs> trying to catch up with uh, Jay. A hundred million dollars. Yeah, once again, I don't think a lot of people will get that. Uh, you know, from the '60s and '70s, you can always tell an evil person because they wore a goatee. So, yeah. hence, evil Mike. Yes. But if they're younger, they won't get it. So, hopefully, nope. our, our audience uh, would get the reference to the evil Mike. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, we hope you all have a great week. And uh, from Arizona, I'm Michael. From the hills of Texas, I'm Jay. And from Texas, I'm A.K. Mike. That's <laughs> a different way to sign it off. It was. I know. We could sign off the regular way. Uh, I'm no, Michael from Arizona. <laughs> yeah, I'm Jay, man. Hurry up. I'm not Jay. <laughs> anyway, well, it's uh, been a fun time, and uh, we will see you in two weeks. Let's fly. You have been listening to the Park Flyer Podcast. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to your next visit. Please give our show a star rating and review, and feel free to email us your questions, topics, or suggestions to Park Flyer Podcast at gmail.com.